Hey guys, what is up? Mike here. Thanks for tuning in to another video. In this video, I'm going to explain and talk about the Agile Scrum development process and talk about how product designers, UI, UX designers fit within this development process. Now, um, this is going to be a little technical, but I'm going to do my best to keep it in plain speak for everybody to understand. Um, in my opinion, this is probably a great video to watch if you're going on an interview, because if you can speak to uh, speak to the Agile Scrum development process in a general sense to a hiring manager or whatnot as a UI, UX designer, or product designer, um, it really boosts your value in terms of um, your skill set or knowledge and really looks good in an interview and really you know, up your chances in landing a job. So watch this video over if you're going on an interview or just to get an understanding of this development process, even if your organization is not using it. Um, at some point, you will have to understand this. Um, as you progress through different companies. So in explaining what um, Agile Scrum, let me just explain what Agile Scrum is. Agile is basically like an, like an adjective. It's like your ability to move quickly, okay? So development teams uh, or companies have adopted this philosophy over the years, okay? It's like we have to be agile in our development process, meaning that in the old days, Basically, a you know when when a company wanted to produce a particular application, let's say like build Facebook, they would like gather all these requirements and start you know design. They, they would design all the stuff and then they would just start coding for months. I'm talking about six months, eight months. They develop this stuff and after 12 to 14 months, all the the product that's been done, it's 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 in development and uh, it goes out right. So it's this long process that everybody uh, starts down this path and they, they don't actually move quickly um, to market changes. Okay, so over the years, companies have adapted this new thing called um, Agile. Basically, a, an example of Agile would be if we're developing on a, um, if we're developing on a particular iOS um, system and then iPhone X comes out, iPhone 10 comes out, in which with the new iOS, and that's available to developers, the company might say, hey, let's pivot on this process and let's design our app on this new iOS that's coming out in like two months, right? And so the development process or development team will actually can pivot. And that's the concept of being agile, is just being able to move quickly, okay? Now within agile as a philosophy, there's this development process called Scrum, okay? Now the Scrum, before I can explain Scrum, let me explain Waterfall. Waterfall is the old process. And basically Waterfall is like this. I'm a CEO and I want to build Facebook. I'll say, you know, I want to build Facebook. So I get my people, my product owners, build us Facebook, you know, put a team together and let's build Facebook. So the product owners will gather all these requirements. Um, and you've probably heard of this term BRD, right? Um, business requirement document or whatever these big chunks of documents like this. And so the product owners will basically take two two months or so, whatever it takes to put all these requirements together um, based on how to build Facebook. And then they give it to the designers. And then the designers will code it, or, or the designers will do the UX design work, right? And then after we do all this work for like four to six months of all this design and UX testing and all that stuff, we then give it to development. Development will take about six months to eight months to code it all because we've done this huge chunk uh, of, of, of an application. And so it takes eight months to code it all and then they test it. it. takes a few months to test it and then they release it and maintain it. So it's a, it's a waterfall process. Product requirements, UX or UI design, development, um, testing, and then maintenance, right? It's a waterfall. It's like a flow, okay? Um, so some smart technical folks, whatever, came up with a, a way to say, you know what, instead of waterfall, there's, there's better ways to do um, this. And, and when they've adopted Agile, they, in Agile Scrum is a framework within Agile that allows you to work in small chunks and um, you work in small periods of, at a time. Like you might work at two, you might work for two weeks and then you stop, you look at what you've done and uh, everybody agrees that, okay, we like what we see, let's move forward. And then you work for another two weeks uh, 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 of, of, of little periods, right? And these little periods are called sprints, okay? So in Scrum, 
you have what's called sprint cycles. This is like, it could be a two week period, it could be a three week period, or it could be a four week period of time. So basically you don't really, generally you don't really code, you, you take small chunks at a time. So if we're building, let's say the concept of Facebook, the product owners in an agile environment, a product owner will have what's called a backlog. And what, just think of an Excel spreadsheet of 50 items, okay? Uh, for Facebook, we need a login page. We need uh, a news feed. We need profile page, right? And so this product owner will have a list of things that she wants, that he or she wants to get done, that we need to get done or code it in order to build Facebook. So the product owner and development team um, works together and it looks at this list and that's called sprint planning. They get together and plan out what they can, they can take from this list and complete within that two week period of time, which is called sprint, all right? So the development team might say, on that list that you have, we can do the login page. If the, if the, if the sprint cycle is four weeks, they might say, I can do the log, we can do the login page and we can start on the home page, right? Or that landing page. And so the, the product owner says, okay, done. So they all agree that we're gonna do the login page and the other page, right? And so within four weeks, they do that work and that's completed. And then after it's completed, they test it, they demo it, everybody is aware of it, stakeholders are looking at this and um, everyone's happy and then they move on to the other items in the list in what's called the backlog. Now, in the Scrum process, um, the scrum, you have scrum teams and think of scrum teams as like, like a Navy SEAL team, okay? In a development, in a development organization at a company, you might have tons of engineers, right? Like the army, right? Think of the army, military. You have hundreds of thousands of military soldiers, okay? And, um, but a scrum team moves like a Navy SEAL team. Basically, you have like maybe four engineers, uh, a QA person and a product owner, all right? So you might have a, a team of six people and that's called a scrum team. And on these teams, these teams are probably, sometimes at different companies they're given um, like really creative names. So you might, you might be on a scrum team that's called like Luke Skywalker scrum team, right? Or Darth Vader, like if, at their company, if they really like uh, Star Wars or whatever, they, they name them in different things like that, right? D different like factions or whatnot, different creative names. At ADP, they used to, for a long time, they used to have like colors, like you're on the red team, you're on the blue team, blue scrum team. It was kind of boring and then, you know, um, we started to change that around so they come up with different names, right? Um, so the point here is you're working on a scrum team. You have a scrum team and your scrum team is given a section of a particular application. So think of Google. Google has several scrum teams working on different parts of Google. You might have a scrum team that, that works on one section of Gmail. You might have another scrum team that works on Google search. You might have another scrum team that works on um, Google Maps, right? Different parts of Google Maps. So you have scrum teams and they work like, like, um, like Navy SEALs, right? They can move quickly. So they work within these two week cycles or four week cycles or sprints. And um, they can pivot at any time because you're only working in a short stint like two weeks, they can say, okay, let's stop what we're doing. We have something else on the backlog that, you know, and so the product owner monitors that backlog. And let's say after uh, they're working on a, they're working on a particular section, the product owner can, can move stuff up. That's at the bottom. They can say, you know what? The iPhone X came out that we actually want to move that up to, to the like third spot. And so the next sprint, we're going to be working on that. And so the developers will look at that backlog, um, plan out with the product owners, what they can do and uh, take on the work. In, the, uh, in, the, uh, in this process, this development process, um, they use a, a particular tool to monitor all these, the things that they're getting done. Like at, at um, ADP, they use a tool called Rally. And Rally is a tool that um, where developers will take on work and it's called user stories. Basically, the product owners um, creates these stories that the developer will take on. So for example, let's say you're building Facebook, um, you take on the user story of building the homepage, right? They click on this link and in this, this area, this, this, this user story, they should have all the requirements. The developer has all the requirements on what they need to code. Now, they have all the requirements. They have like the acceptance criteria uh, from the QA team. 
or from the product owners. And then in addition, they have the mock-ups and the specs needed for this particular work. Hence, the UI UX design work, product design work has to be done completed before any of these sprint cycles begin. All right, so that leads me to where does UI UX design fits into this uh, product development process. UI UX design is always, should be always working ahead of any sprint cycle. All right, so what I mean by that is before a development or a developer begins to work on a user story, that user story needs to be designed, tested, whatever you have to do, user tested, um, surveyed, however, the UX, UI portion, that should have been done weeks, months before a developer, if I'm a developer, if I actually started on this, I should not be in the development, I should not be in a coding process or a situation and then this stuff hasn't been tested, this stuff hasn't been, you know, uh, finished, completed from a, so they should have all the assets, all the mockups, all the specs they need to start working. If they do not, then they won't meet that deadline of working within a two week sprint, if that makes any sense, okay? So how does, how does UI UX design fits in? UI UX design is separate from Scrum, okay? UI UX design, we have our own process, right? We have to gather the requirements from the, from the product owner. We have to go back to our desk. We have to brainstorm. We have to um, wireframe or mock up, and then we have to test it. If, if, if there's things that needs to be tested, that needs to be done. So that might take weeks, right? Weeks, a couple months or so before we can actually deliver and say, here's the login page to Facebook, or here's the profile page to Facebook and start here. You guys are ready to start coding, right? So basically product designers and product designers, UI UX designers and the product person, we work together weeks, months, generally in advance before sprint cycles begin. Okay. Now we do our work. We're ready. Let's say we've, we've done our work. We've, we've designed all our stuff. We've tested this Facebook, uh, app or whatever, and we're ready to go. We have prototypes in envision. We have specs. We have um, all the icons and assets and things are, are ready to go. We give that to the product owners. We, we attach them to these user stories. Right. So what we do is when the, when the actual sprint cycles begin within the scrum environment, we just monitor whether or not the developers or product owners needs any resources from us. Mind you, all our work has been done. Um, we only basically, when it comes down to the developers have completed the work and QA goes ahead and test this stuff. We have to work with QA to make sure, yeah, developers, um, you know, cause sometimes they'll code this stuff and it's not according to spec. So we still have to monitor them and, um, be, um, available to them, um, as they're going through their sprint cycles. Do we have to sit with them every single day through their sprint cycles and their work? No, we can continue to work on other stuff like future sprint stuff. Um, but at the same time, we have to be available to them and make sure that they have all the assets and resources they need in order to complete these sprints. If they do not have the stuff, then they can't complete the work done in these sprints and then stuff gets pushed back, all right? And becomes a bottleneck. Now in Scrum, they have what's called a Scrum Master. It could be the product owner or somebody that just keeps everybody on track, right? And so they have daily standups. You probably heard this term, daily standups. Um, a product designer, myself, sometimes um, if I work, if we're working on a huge project, I might join, I might be a part of the scrum team and I might sit in these daily standups like just, you know, very early. I mean, uh, for the first um, few weeks of a development cycle and um, just make sure everybody has their stuff. But as it gets going, I kind of like back out and I don't have to like really be involved every single day because uh, daily standups are basically like, asking developers, hey, do you guys got everything you need? Are there any roadblocks? And so they talk about technical challenges and stuff like that. It rarely comes up that, hey, we need, um, you know, these, these, we don't have these icons or we don't have this UI design spec. That stuff, if it's not there, it's your job as a product designer to work really quickly and get that to those developers. But um, for the most part, you know, you stay within the scrum team, you go to some daily standups, maybe just to kind of listen in and make sure they have everything. Once they have everything and they're, they're kind of flowing, you can move on to other parts and, and start designing on other things. Now, 
I've worked on several scrum teams, okay? So I actually support at ADP, I supported like four different scrum teams. So that, what that means is I've done work for this scrum team. And so I made sure that they had their work. I worked on this scrum team. And so what does that mean? Do I go to all these four scrum teams, st daily standups? No, I just keep in contact with the product owners. They make sure that um, all the stories that they write within Rally have um, all the mockups and documentation and stuff that they need, like assets, like icons and stuff and, and specs. Once that's done, everything is good. And then as designers, we continue to work with product owners and start designing future things. Okay, so we're always ahead of the development cycle. That's pretty much, um, I know I said a lot it's going on 16 minutes now. Um, that's pretty much how, what Agile Scrum is. It's a development process and that's how product designers fit within that system. Hopefully this was helpful. Watch it again before you go on an interview. Learn these things, Agile Scrum, Sprint, Sprint Cycle, Scrum Master, all these technical terms. If you use those within an interview, you'll look really good. Anyway, thanks for watching guys. If you have any questions, visit my website, mlwebco.com. Use the contact link on my page to ask me any questions and I'll be happy to answer any questions for you. We'll talk soon. Peace.